Cat Synth TV. Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and today we are looking at the infamous Octave Cat synthesizer, perhaps the most appropriately named synth for our channel. In the 1970s, synthesizer makers started releasing more compact, portable versions of their analog subtractive synthesizers for live performance. Among the most famous were the Mini Moog and the Arp Odyssey. At about the same time, a young engineer, Carmine Bonanno, in New York started a new company, Octave Electronics, and created the CAT synthesizer. It too was a performance-oriented analog subtractive synthesizer with some added features for mixing waveforms, sub-octaves, and cross-modulation. Its compact form factor and keyboard bore quite a resemblance to the ARP Odyssey, so much so that ARP filed a lawsuit, though it was unsuccessful, and Octave came out with a new model, the Octave Cat SRM, with a different keyboard design. A later revision, the SRM2 added some new features. They also released a smaller one-oscillator model, rather appropriately named the Kitten. After an unsuccessful larger model, the Voyatra 8, the company renamed itself Voyatra and found success in the 1980s and 1990s with computer software and hardware. Of course, given the name, I had to have one of these unique synthesizers. This is a Mark I version. It was in need of some maintenance, but fortunately we were able to get it fully overhauled by our friends at Synthetic Dreamscapes, including QA manager Gracie. They stand on everything they do. The CAD is laid out in a manner that should be familiar to anyone who has used analog subtractive synthesizers of this era. VCO1 has controls to mix several waveforms as well as modulation and frequency controls. VCO2 has similar controls. There is the VCF with frequency and Q controls as well as modulation options. A VCA, a separate noise generator, transients aka envelopes, and some global controls including pitch and LFO. This instrument is a beast, and a bit funky in a good way. It definitely requires a bit of time to warm up, which we have already done. So let's give it a try, shall we? First, let's open up the filter and bring up the sawtooth on VCO1. Pretty typical sawtooth sound. Now, as we mentioned earlier, one of the unique features of the CAT is blending multiple waveforms at once, including a special sub-oscillator. Let's add that in now. We also recommend you listen to this demo somewhere with good bass support. As you can hear, the sub-oscillator adds some nice punchy bass to the sound. If we bring down the sawtooth, we can hear that the sub is really a simple square wave. Let's look at the other waveforms. We have a pulse with variable width between square and impulse. If we change the modulation from DC to the triangle LFO, we get a nice pulse width modulation. And finally, let's look at the triangle wave. Of course, the real fun is playing all the waveforms together for an extra fat sound that is quintessentially the cat. Nice. Now let's bring down everything except the sawtooth and bring up VCO2. The extreme beating we're hearing is because the oscillators are a bit out of tune with each other. We can try to bring them closer together. 
Of course, keeping a little bit of detuning gives us a richer sound. Now let's bring in VCO2 sub oscillator and then VCO1 as well. Oh yeah, I could just keep playing that. But now it's time to bring in the VCF. This is a very idiosyncratic four-pole resonant filter with a nice gritty sound. It has the usual cutoff frequency and cue controls. Now let's increase the cue for a more resonant sound. Okay, enough of that. Let's bring it back down to a civilized level. We can turn up modulation from the ADSR envelope to shape the filter frequency for that classic analog sound. Set the envelope. Yeah, nice. Let's increase the attack a bit. We can set the ADSR envelope to repeat, making it into an LFO of sorts. Of course, we have the built-in LFO as well, and we can use that to modulate the filter. Switch to a square LFO for a different sound. I really like that. Let's add a bit of the noise generator. Oh yeah, I feel like I'm in a 1970s soundtrack. There is also a sample and hold feature which uses the LFO to take samples from either the noise generator or VCO1. Let's use that to modulate the VCF. I actually think it works better with VCO1 than with the noise.
Okay, let's turn off modulation and go back to just Sawtooth on VCOs 1 and 2. The CAD includes a sync function for classic analog hard sync between VCO2 and VCO1. Let's try it out. Yeah, that's the classic hard sync sound. This works particularly well if we use the ADSR envelope to modulate the frequency of VCO1. Note that we have to set the attack and decay pretty high to get that sweep effect. We can simultaneously use the envelope for a filter sweep. Nice, but it gets even better if we add in the sub-oscillator for VCO2. We can also add more waveforms to VCO1 to affect the sync character. Yeah, it has a bit more bite with a triangle in the mix. Let's add in the sub. The square wave of the sub-oscillator gives the sync that bumpy quality that we just heard. We can also do frequency modulation. The simplest way to do this is using the LFO. But the Octave Cat also lets us use the VCOs themselves as frequency modulators. Let's assign VCO1 to modulate VCO2. For this application, we want to just hear VCO2 and leave VCO1 as a modulator, so we can switch off VCO1 from the filter. You know, this would probably work better if I actually turned up the modulation on VCO1. We can once again use the envelope to modulate VCO1 and the FM timbre. FM can be quite unpredictable, but we can make it even more so by using VCO2 to frequency modulate VCO1 at the same time as VCO1 is modulating VCO2.
We can also have VCO1 modulate the frequency of the filter for some really wild sounds. We hope that you've enjoyed this look at the Octave Cat, a classic but often overlooked synthesizer. To find out more, check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.